Okay, so we're back to our slides and a chance to look at the magnetic field that comes into existence around a wire that's carrying a current. And remember, the first thing is that all magnetic fields arise from moving charges. So what we said in class last week is that if you have a current in a wire, and you can see this in the upper left up here, this is a current in a wire, and I just put a star next to it. I means current, that's amps, and you can see the current in this wire is flowing up. And so the rule is we take our hand, and that's got to be someone's right hand, and if the thumb is the direction of the current in the wire, then the fingers show the wraparound magnetic field that comes into existence in the space around that wire. And that's a B field. The B field is the abbreviation that we give to a magnetic field. So the B field around this blue wire in the upper left hand corner here is actually a circular magnetic field where the direction of the magnetic field is showing the north orientation of a field that enwraps and circles that wire. It's not that there is a magnet in a place, but rather that there is a magnetic field that comes into existence around that wire. Now over here, if we look on the right hand side, where you can see this disk has been laid next to a wire, the current is still going up, and so we have a current going upwards, and that's the flow of the current from positive to negative, and you can see the blue lines around this are showing the magnetic field, and just like the other diagram, that field would be encircling this wire, and from above you can see that it's going counterclockwise. Well, what they've done in this diagram is that to show you the orientation of the magnetic field, there's a compass placed on the disk table, and the compass is reacting to the magnetic field around the wire by pointing along that circular line. If we moved that compass around on the disk, if we put it in different places, it would change its pointing, it would change the position. So over here, the compass would point like that, here the compass would point like that, and you can see that the compass would actually pick up the magnetic field and be oriented in the direction of the field around that wire. So these are magnetic fields around a current carrying wire. Now here in this second slide, we see that there is a wire, well, it's not a wire, it's just a charge. If there was a wire, the wire would be running along like this, and that wire gives us a direction for our current. But if that charge, and you can see the positive charge, which is blue right here, if that charge is flowing up in this diagram, we know that moving charges create a magnetic field. But what's new in this image is that the moving charge is in the space between a north and a south permanent magnet. So now we're gonna see that magnetic fields interact, and that the magnetic field created by the moving charge, or the current in the wire, if there is a wire, is going to interact with the existing magnetic field between the north and the south. And that means these fields are going to repel or create a force, and the force is going to push on the charge or accelerate the charge or push the entire wire. So let's do this. Let's draw the direction of the field lines that are between these two poles, the north and the south. Remember that magnetic field lines come out of a north and they go to a south. So you can see the direction of the field, the B field, is pointing to the left. It's pointing across. I've drawn it with red lines, but that's the magnetic field. Meanwhile, the direction of the current is going up. So our charge movement is up, and our field is going from right to left, out of the north and into the south. That's our rule for magnetic field lines. They come out of north, they go into south. So magnetic field across to the left and current going up. Well, what this diagram tells us is that the force on the wire, or the force on the moving charge, is going to be in a third perpendicular direction. In this case, the force on the wire is going to be out of this page. That charge is going to feel a force coming at you. And we're going to come up with a new right-hand rule, one that uses all three fingers, or our thumb, our fingers, and our palm, to be able to determine the direction of the force that is felt by a moving charge in a magnetic field, remembering that a moving charge creates a magnetic field of its own. So take a good look at this diagram. This is the way that we're going to use our right hand to show us the force on a moving charge in a magnetic field. That would also be the force on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field. Now the B field, or the magnetic field, comes out of the north on the right 
and goes into the south. So now in this diagram, there are blue lines that are showing the direction of the magnetic field. The magnetic field is going across the page to the left. Now our charge, which is a positive charge, is right here. I'm circling it with red. Our charge is actually a charge that is going to be moving up. And the charge is going to move up through the magnetic field. So now what we do with our right hand is we use the thumb to indicate the direction of the current. That's the same as it was. The thumb is the direction of current, so I'm going to mark that here. Here's my thumb. The thumb is pointing up, because up is the way the charge is moving. My four fingers, which are straight out, are being aligned in the direction of the magnetic field line. So the thumb up and the four fingers going across from north to south, my palm is now going to show the push, the pushing force that the charge will experience. So what my palm shows in this diagram is that when the current's moving up in a magnetic field that goes to the left, the force on this charge from my palm is going to come at us. It's going to come out of the page. And I know in this case it actually looks like it's coming at a diagonal down, but this force means that it's coming out of the page. It's coming at us. So the palm is showing that very clearly, and this tells us that we're going to be accelerating that charge out of the page towards us if it's a current moving upwards in a magnetic field to the left. So we're going to get a chance now to practice that in an animation and see if we can make a prediction about the way that a wire would move. Okay, now so look at this diagram. This diagram is actually a still screenshot from the interactive animation that I'm going to have you work with to try turning the current on and off in this wire. But what I want you to do is see if you can make a prediction on how this wire is going to be pushed once we turn the current on. Now, notice this. Right now, over here at the switch, we have a place that shows the switch is open, and since the switch is open, there's no current running. But when I close the switch and turn it on, if I do turn the switch on, the current is going to flow up this wire like this and come down the wire. It's going to go down this back side, and then the current is going to come across like that, go up and out this way, and it's going to leave like that. And that's because I have the plus and current flow is always looked at from the perspective of how plus charges would move, even though it's electrons that are flowing. This is the set of arrows that we can draw on here. So if that's the direction of current motion, then how do I use my right hand rule with thumb, fingers, and palm to determine the force on this wire. So the place I really want to look at, the place I want to see the wire, is right down here. This wire is going to have a current moving through it that's coming sort of through the magnet towards us, and I want to know in this magnetic field which direction will the force be. Now notice the magnet is a horseshoe magnet. This is my north. Here's the north pole in red. This is my south. Here's the south pole down below in green. That means the magnetic field, which is being drawn in blue, goes down from the north to the south. So I think you have everything you need. Try that out. Use your thumb for the current in the wire. Use your fingers straight down and show me which direction the force will be on this wire between these two magnetic poles. Here's a reminder of the sort of orientation of your hand. Sometimes we also use that second finger instead of the palm, but the palm and the second finger are the same. So look, if you look over here, with my current coming out of the page, current out of the page, that's my thumb, here's the thumb showing that, and with my magnetic field going down, here are my fingers, or my fingers pointing down, the resultant force looks like it should be my palm telling me that the force is going to be to the right. And so if you look at resultant force to the right, that's because my palm or this middle ring finger are both indicating perpendicular, it's going to be to the right. So let's take these two images and put them back on the diagram that we had of the current carrying wire and see how that shows us the direction of the force. Okay, here's the right hand with the thumb and the fingers or palm oriented, and here's our diagram of the magnet, remembering again that this is the north pole red and the south pole blue, and noticing also that we have the 
uh, ability to predict the magnetic field being down. Now just that reminder once more, when I turn this switch and make the connection, the flow of current is going to go like this. It's going to come across the back wire, go down the back side, and come through and out in the wire. Then it's going to go up this side of the wire, come out like this all the way down, and come back around. So using this set of our fingers to orient straight down for my four fingers, thumb coming out of the page, you can see that your palm is going to show the resultant force on the wire to the right should be pushing the wire out between the north and south pole, going out to the right. So we'll see that in the next figure when we turn the current on. So now this diagram puts it all together. You can see, as I was indicating, the switch is closed and there's current flowing through the red wire. And with the current flowing through the wire in the magnetic field, the force between the two magnetic fields, one from the permanent magnet and then a second magnetic field coming into existence once the current flows, is going to push that wire out and to the right. This is called the Lorentz force. We saw it in the little MIT video where the wire jumped out of the horseshoe magnets. It jumped up when they hooked up the 12 volt battery and then when they reversed the current flow the wire was pushed down and that pulled the two towers together and the two towers collapsed. So we saw that in the video and now you're seeing it in this simulation. So in the assignment I've asked you after watching this little uh, animated slide set to then go to these Lorentz force animations and just play a little bit with the switches. You can see that over here on the right you have the current direction, the orientation of the magnetic field and the Lorentz force being shown. So when those boxes are checked it, it means show them in my diagram. Here you can turn the current on and off, you can spin the magnet around, you can reverse the current direction. So I want you to do that and see if you can make sense with your right hand rule of why the Lorentz force is in the direction it is. This is important because it's going to allow us to explain and understand why an electric motor spins, an electromagnet within a permanent magnet, why we can get a direct current motor to spin. So we'll see that very soon, but it's important that you get this fundamental Lorentz force in a wire first. That's all.